Hello, today we will learn some concept in OSPF. Continuing from the last time we talk about routing process and uh, static routing concept, except right now I'm delivering in English rather than Bahasa. I use this OSPF mindset from Awais Chauduri. Uh, shout out to you, bro, for making this map. Uh, it helped many and especially me to deliver this topic, this outline. If you want to join, here the link below to the group where he is. Now, we will focus on the network associate certification level of OSPF knowledge. We will learn about OSPF areas, the tables, the packets, the states, and the link and network types. As per you know, OSPF is a link state type of protocol. But there are some characteristics. First one is the concept of backbone. In order to fully connect the router to each other, the backbone area all, or we call it area zero must be connected, must be created. Why we call it backbone? Because this area can provide connectivity from one area to another area. Uh, let's say we want to connect area 51 to area 52. Those two areas must be connected to the backbone area. Here's the catch. Non-backbone areas cannot directly connect to each other unless there's a backbone areas connecting them. This is the OSPF concept that we must fully understand. Why should it be this way? Hey, don't question me. I'm not the one who made the OSPF concept. Because this protocol is link state type, this router must know each other routers in its own area. You got 10 of your friends, you must know every one of them. You got invited to your friend birthday party, well, the host will surely got you introduced to all of his friends. Let's say 50 of them. Well, good luck remembering all of them. What? But this is the concept of link state that the OSPF has in it. The OSPF call this concept flooding. Because of this flooding behavior, OSPF made three tables to organize this information. The first thing OSPF do when connected, aka adjacency, is make a neighbor table. The table that filled with your directly connected friend, your closest friend, or your family. After the neighbor table is built, the OSPF will make an LSDB table, or we call it database table. It's like my brothers know some people, my mom knows some people, my childhood and closest friend also know some people. I must recognize all of them, I must know which faces that knows my moms, my friends, and my closest childhood friends. This information is collected and stored in the table we call it LSDB table or database table. Now, the third part is OSPF will process which route that takes a short way, the shortest one possible to my mom friends, my brother's companion, and so on from the database information table. The best part or the best route will be selected and imported to routing table. The third one is routing table. Now let's take a closer look. When OSPF wants to connect to each other, OSPF will tell the router to send a packet, an OSPF packet. The first thing OSPF send is the introduction SMS, the hello packet, OSPF hello packet. What contain in the OSPF hello packet is this. The first one is router ID. Router ID is the name of the router. If you want to join conversation, uh, we may use alphabetical format. But in the OSPF router, they use IP address format as their addressing name. And this field is mandatory. The second one is 
area ID. This OSPF packet field contains the information about the area that router belongs to. In order to join the same area, the value must be same. The third one is hello and date interval. Hello, date, and wait timer. The value must be same for each adjacent router in order to speak OSPF properly. Otherwise, it can connect. But you know, here's the unique side of OSPF timer. Because it correlates with OSPF links and network type. How? When we type 10.1.1.0 space 0.0.0.255 space area space 0, the OSPF will look up which interface this network belongs to. And if it's Ethernet, OSPF will assume this network are on the broadcast mode, and the hello timer will be adjusted accordingly. But now let's set it into point-to-point -point mode. You will see the timer exactly the same like broadcast, and it connect. So the conclusion is the timer value must be the same in order to be connected to each other. But there is a drawback. You maybe you can connect to each other, but can receive flooding or LSDB information. Why? Because the network type is different. Of course, we can modify the timer and the network type separately, but this is not the point for associate level knowledge. Just leave it be. Don't mess around with timer and network type. If you want to change one router network type and timer, make sure the other one is keeping up with the same value, the same configuration. That's it. The fourth one is authentication. This material is for advanced level, for CCNP level. Uh, the point is, this authentication made for a foreign router can just connect to existing ISPF and get some information from it. The fifth one, MTU, stands for Maximum Transmission Unit. How big the packet is before it gets trunc truncated or splitted? The default one is 1,500 1, bytes. The problem is, MTU value is one of the parameter SPF check, and just like the other, it must be the same. The sixth one, the subnet mask, self-explanatory. The seventh one, router priority. Remember the floating concept? Remember number three, the Ethernet is automatically translated to broadcast type of network? Now, imagine something like this. A router send OSPF packet and broadcasted by switch, and all the received OSPF hello packet will be broadcasted again by adjacent router, including his own OSPF packet and on and information. This is one hell of a mess. So OSPF came with a concept called designated router and backup designated router, DR BDR. The concept is to limit broadcasting mode capabilities of router, so only the chosen one can broadcast the hello packet. How it works? In the OSPF, there are messages aside from hello packet. One of them is LSU, link state update, which contain a lot of LSA, link state advertisement, which has many form or many type. Uh, we learn about LSA later because it deserves one specific videos, but uh, OSPF will send LSA type 2 to neighboring router for choosing who's the boss, who's the signated router and his vice. The information primary comparing the router ID. The first one, all adjacent router will compare their own router ID. Whoever has the highest value gets the job, gets the title of designated router, and the second highest IP gets the title backup DR. This is the primary one. But sometimes engineer forgot to configure OSPF router ID. No problem. The second one, 
if router ID information doesn't exist, it will look up to loopback IP address information. It took the highest IP address of loopback it has to be its router ID. But if you don't have loopback, they uh, they escalate to third uh, mechanism, which is the router will took the highest physical IP address of its own. So if undesired router that somehow get the highest router ID and get the DR job, how can we override it? Router priority configuration. So if our network is point to point, what we must do to OSPF and disable DRBDR process? The answer is just switch it to point to point mode, just like this. Okay, now we go to OSPF adjacency states. When we configure router OSPF1 in Cisco router, the OSPF adjacency is down, means it is not active yet. When in the down state, the router is instead of thinking, what name should I take? What router ID information came from? From loopback, from physical interface, or from the configuration of router ID itself. Uh, by the way, before we moving to the second state, what is OSPF1, the number one? The value one in OSPF called process ID. In the network associate level, it doesn't matter what value you enter. But in CCNP, you might consider this value because layer T virtualization called VRF. Let's say uh, company A IP 10.1.1.1 and company B get 10.1.1.1.2. IP private, anyone can use it. The problem lies in the ISP side. You know, the router cannot overlap each other. The router interface, the IP address cannot overlap uh, each other. So how? Just like VLAN, the physical switch gets configured to be many virtual switches. The router, just like that. We have one physical router, but in the configuration, we can create many virtual router, each router for each company. That is a simple definition of VR, virtual routing and forward. And now, we uh, move on to second step. When we type router, OSPF1, enter, and then we type network 10.1.1.0 space blah 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 area 0, the state will change to init. It prepares the OSPF hello packet to be sent to the configured OSPF network. Might well take a note on this. In non-broadcast mode of OSPF, it called attempt instead of init. Now, each router has sent hello packet and, and see its value and if it matches, they are preparing to replay the packet with some information about some routes they know. The RBDR if in BMA network. This state called two-way state. And move on to the next state. Now they know each other. So who's the one will start the exchange process? You first or me first? This state called XSTAR, a master-slave relationship, not like the RBDR for broadcast type. Uh, master-slave relationship is just, I'm the master, so I get to send the information first. That's it. Now, the router will look some information it doesn't have and ask the neighboring router to send it to him. It called the exchange state. In this state, the LSU, the LSR link state request is maintained. After the router knows some information that it missing for him, it will start updating its own list. This state called loading state. Now, the router has identical LSDB table and ready to send packet from our computer. This is the full state, the ready state. Okay. 
I think this is enough uh, OSPF information for you guys who want to learn Network Associate Level Certification. Let's save it the LSA type, the tuning, the summarization, the authentication for later videos. And by the way, OSPF use 224.0.0.5 for multicast address in order to reach each other. And if it has a BMA, Broadcast Multi-Access Network, the OSPF will use 224.0.0.6 sent by the Senator router. OSPF version 4, IP version 4, we call it OSPF V2. The V2 is silent. In the IP version 6, we call it OSPF version 3. I hope I got this OSPF knowledge I'll cover for you to take associate certification exam and I hope to see you in the next video. Ciao!